Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is theCUBE. theCUBE is our flagship program. We'll go out to events like IBM Edge, which we're at today. We extract the signal from the noise. I'm very excited to have Mike Smith here. He's the CIO of Lee Memorial Health System. We love to talk healthcare. It's something that affects all of our lives. Stu and I, we talk about it at our work. We talk about it when we're in the theCUBE. It's always a great case study. Mike, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you. So you're up on stage today uh, in front of the big audience, about 5,000 people here. Uh, with a colleague from uh, from City and Jamie Thomas. So how did that feel? Oh, I felt good. It was, uh, it was a great crowd, a lot of energy, uh, good topics, um, and it was nice to be on the stage with Jamie and and, uh, and the fellow from Citibank. So storage is cool. I've been in this you know, infrastructure business a long time, and, and that's all well and good. We were talking off camera. Storage is not something that should keep a CIO awake at night. If storage is keeping a CIO awake at night, that's, that's not a good thing. Right. You got other challenges. And, right. and, uh, so I wonder if you could talk a little bit about Lee Memorial, we start there, sort of what your focus is and, 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 and talk about your mission. Yeah, uh, well we're a large uh, healthcare provider uh, in Southwest Florida, and we have uh, all elements of healthcare delivery from the hospitals. We, uh, we own all the hospitals in that area. Uh, to long-term care and home health and the physician offices and so really the continuum of care uh, coverage so whatever a patient might need we generally have those services and and that's a pretty big deal it's kind of unusual in this sense. how large are you guys uh, well uh, there's several rankings we're we're over a billion in net revenue uh, uh, 1500 beds 1500 across okay. four hospitals um, so pretty good size. Four hospitals, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you've got you've got IT in each of those. Yeah, it's hospitals? all centralized. So we run all of the uh, information technology out of a central location, and uh, and we have a backup data center, and we're kind of unusual uh, in a couple of respects in that um, we we have all of the hospitals. That's unusual. Usually it's fragmented in a market, uh, and. Um, uh, and the way we're structured that we, uh, we work hard to deliver integrated care for the community. So I talked about this morning some of the challenges with the cost of health care, quality, that sort of thing, and a lot of that has to do with the way uh, we deliver health care. It's, it's, uh, we're, we're, we're a person, uh, when we walk in, we would like the care to be all coordinated, but that's not the way care is delivered today generally, because care is not paid for that way. Care is paid for by in and uh, so those are some of the changes that uh, really the, probably IBM, probably CMS, Medicare, all of those players are trying to change because that's where some of the costs are. And the most in quality is, is occurring is with those different providers that aren't coordinated. So we've been tackling that with the information technology solutions and the clinical record that we put in. So you obviously, highly regulated industry, HIPAA, you know, compliance was something that was, and probably still is, you know, top of mind. Um, although you've been thrown this new curveball, which is the Affordable Care Act, uh, AKA Obamacare. Yeah. How has that changed your focus, your priorities, your investments, and, you know, your objectives? Well, I, I would say in some respects, what it's done is not changed them so much, but rather accelerated them in some respects. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've been working hard to deliver integrated care to our community for many years, we've been after that goal, but th what the uh, Meaningful Use Effort and uh, Accountable Care Act did is provide some funding that helped accelerate what we're trying to do. And you know, this, this, whole, um, this whole notion of meaningful use is kind of interesting. Folks don't uh, necessarily think about it, but really this reflects what CMS, what Medicare is trying to do, which is move us toward evidence-based care, best practice care, move us toward coordinated care. And so if you think about that, uh, as CMS tries to change the reimbursement model and pay us for delivering an outcome rather than physician office visits, for example, you really can't do that if you don't have everything wired together. So if you take the goals of CMS on the one hand and you take meaningful use on the other, you'll see that meaningful use and those goals with the electronic health record really are to enable that 
Medicare, uh, Medicare care and changes. So some folks in our audience may not understand the whole meaningful use thing. And uh -huh. Maybe we could talk about that a little okay. bit. Because essentially, in order for you to get paid, you've got to demonstrate that you're actually adopting technology, right? Right. In a, in a way that is meaningful and has outcomes. That, right. So it's, but it's, it's a real stick in a way, right? There's no upside, you don't get, or, or is there? Well, there is. There, um, uh, there, in the first several stages of meaningful use, there is upside. There are dollars that are made available that are considerable in the range from, uh, uh, say, in total $50,000 a physician, $44,000 to be specific, uh, to several million dollars for hospitals. So it's considerable. And then after 2015 or 2016, depending on what kind of provider you are, then there is a stick that kicks in. And if you're not meaningfully using at that point, then you start taking payment penalties. Okay, so it's there for the taking now, so that's why you got to be fast. Yes. So that's actually a good thing for those who it's can move fast. It's very good, yeah. So it really, it really has helped to accelerate uh, the implementation of electronic health records. And if one used it wisely, not tried to rush in just to get the, the money, but actually tried to put in solutions that would have long-term sustainability, it's really, it was, it's really been a good deal. So how do you spend your time? I mean, obviously, you know, you're here at a storage conference, so infrastructure matters. We had Tom Rosamilia on, and we, yep. we all agree. Yep. Infrastructure matters, it's, it's, especially when it breaks. Yep. You know, but frankly, we don't want to think about it. You know, yep. really don't. So how do you spend your time? Well, uh, so let me start out with some basics. Um, one of the things that I tell our, our informatics and IT organization is we really have three priorities. One is to keep the lights on. Right, you heard this morning that if we do not deliver good care, uh, uh, if we do not deliver good services with our information systems, uh, then everything else we put in place is going to fail. And in matter of fact, uh, if you think about it, we would actually be better off leaving everybody on paper than putting in automation that moves them to paperless and have the automation be flaky, right? Because, right. because they're going to be dependent on it then. So keep the lights on. Quality, quality data, all that kind of thing all falls in that category. The second is uh, those projects, those activities, those new systems that we plan uh, during the capital budgeting process in the health system that we elect as an organization we're going to fund and do. And the third thing is everybody else, the organization, everything else the organization dreams up during the year, <laughs> which is a lot. Yeah, yeah. Right? Other is always the biggest category. There's always everything <laughs> else, right? And that's a, that's a challenge, that's a, uh, because there's way more to do than we can get done, and every day we put more in, which creates more demand, which is more we can't you know, necessarily get done. And the whole industry is dealing with that problem. Right. So, Mike, you know, most of the businesses we talk to now are they're, they're often in the data business. Of course, in healthcare, challenge because you've got all the security issues, as Dave talked, HIPAA compliance and everything, but how is the role of uh, you know, data and business intelligence and you know, analytics you know, changing your job? Well, uh, a variety of ways. Uh, it's a fun conversation to think about though, so let's, let's begin by talking about what does a physician do? So one would say, well, a physician um, to give care, ask for information about you, maybe your family history, maybe orders a test. Does, does not, does not uh, actually get you better. What gets you better is a pill, a shot, surgery, that sort of thing. So if, if you think about what I said, the physicians themselves are deeply in the information. That's what they do. And so we're about providing information to them as well as information to run the business. So I spend a lot of my time uh, working with physicians, working with clinicians, working with the business leaders to set strategies to meet those needs. Are docs embracing technology more than they have the stigma attached to them that they're not the tech savvy, they reject tech? Is mobile changing that? Mobile's changing that and the education and usability of the electronic health records are changing that. You know, there are stereotypes about what an electronic medical record does or an electronic health record does and that those stereotypes about how usable they are often stereotype. It doesn't apply to And so uh, one has to look at what we're really talking about. We're talking about how well or how well they are and how well physicians adopt to those EMRs. Mike, we were talking off camera about uh, informatics. Um, mm -hmm. Talk about healthcare informatics, the data, what you're doing with that data, your data sources, and, and everybody talks about being 
data driven, we all go to these conferences and get our heads filled with the exciting ideas about the potential of data. How is that seeping into your business? Yeah, so if you think about uh, informatics, uh, a couple of things. First off, the, um, the term informatics is really the, the application of those clinicians, business people to the information technology discipline and really advancing that through leadership and through training and, and input that affects the design of those tools. So informatics as opposed to the uh, thing neighborhood of um, um, I would say 35 nurses on the informatics staff, the IT staff. Uh, several physicians work on the staff, uh, pharmacists work on the staff, and that's their role in the IT department is be the informatics staff. When we think about data and analytics, um, often that manifests itself in um, application of alerts and rules so that if a provider, a physician, or an extender places a medication order, the system has rules that's, that are smart enough to say, hey, by the way, did you know that patient is on a similar medication? Excellent. Um, we got a break? Yeah, we have to break? All right, I'm sorry, Tom, we have to leave it there. I got a quick, one quick question. You got time for one quick question? So we talked off camera, you, you don't have a chief data officer. No. Right, okay. Um, are you the chief data officer? It's a combination of individuals. We have clinical disciplines around the data, financial disciplines around the data. So we really have several domains that are handled by different individuals, and the data, the data officer role is really shared. Right, and then, uh, Edge, IBM Edge, you know, we, we kind of threw storage under the bus at the top of the, the hour here, yep. but, uh, but still, at the end of the day, infrastructure matters. So maybe a word on what you're doing with, uh, yeah. with storage. I infrastructure matters, and as I said before, whether it's the data storage, whether it's the power and processing, the redundancy, the tape backups, all those kinds of things matter deeply uh, because that's the integrity behind what we do. Mike, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Uh, appreciate your insights and your time, and uh, always a pleasure uh, speaking you. to someone of your experience and uh, about a very important topic. So keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back, this is IBM Edge, this is theCUBE, right back after this.